So this last weekend, I somehow stumbled and bumbled my way to a 4-0 run to win my armory. I was on my girl Dorinthia, with the new build sent around some of the new hotness from heavy hitters. One of those cards, this one, I knew was good, but performed far above and beyond my expectations. So tonight, I'm explaining why I think Shift the Tide of Battle is absolutely insane. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando. All right, anyway, target warrior attack. So this is a zero attack reaction block three. It's a yellow, though. Target warrior attack with attack greater than its base gets go again. Really? The next time an opposing hero is dealt damage, create an agility token. Oh my god, that's good. Hey there, my flesh and blood friends. Welcome back to Dice Commando and go again. A fabulous cast as tonight we we're talking about how us warriors can shift the tide of battle to our favor with some really cool cards from heavy hitters and specifically talking about why this card is really crazy good. I'm super impressed with how good this card is. So there's no shortage of good cards from heavy hitters in general, but specifically with the warrior ones, we have Furry Blade, as I call it. We have Commanding Presence. We have Runner Runner, which is a pretty darn good brute card. I think it's actually primarily driven by the brute stuff, but hey, it's a popper. Agility is a thing. It's playable. And then we have Shift the Tide of Battle. And you know, I, and we don't talk market stuff very often, but I put up the prices. Furry Blade is the obvious good one because it's a free 0-0. Zero, zero. Commanding Presence can do things. I think Shift the Tide of Battle is after slaying it this weekend. I mean, demand is a thing, and I'm not going to like do market projections, but the fact that this is a $6 card and Furry Blade is a $22 card, Furry Blade's probably a little better. But Shift the Tide of Battle is super good, and it is not limited just to the Dorinthia build that I ran this weekend. Now, many of you may be saying, Andrew, where's your list? Well, my list is actually available to team members. I actually posted it the day before I took it. So there's that available if you want it to you, but no, I'm not going to be going through the list tonight. So sorry, you can go check it out there. Instead, I want to talk strategically shift the tide of battle. Now to put this in perspective of why this card is so good to, I think, seasoned warrior. I mean, the card's phenomenal flat out, right? But in terms of why it's so good to especially folks who are maybe doing what I did, which is taking a build and kind of modifying it a little bit, right? Having a lot of reps on that. This this card is really strong because let's go ahead and put ourselves in the Wayback Machine. And let's talk about Glint the Quicksilver. Long time, it's still in, all right? WTR card, fundamental card, still in most builds, okay? Or even Kasai was playing it and all that. It's a blue, three defense for zero. That doesn't attack reaction, gives you go again. Obviously, the reprise effect. Now, one of the drawbacks of Glint is that it's not all that often, right, that you actually trigger the reprise. It happens, for sure. But then it's kind of a blind draw. And again, you don't get it all that often. Maybe 30 40% of the time is when you're actually able to trigger it. And especially, you know, if you think about the old Kasai, like the dual swing type build, like the old Kasai type build, most of the time they're not blocking the, blocking the front anyway. So then you got to give it go again. Your alternative to that, right, in Crucible of War, we got hit and run. I mean, the blue version, of course, I'm referring to doing a direct comparison here to Glint. You had to forecast it so they knew it was coming. So not quite as good. It didn't have the option. But hey, it was it was decent. And I, again, I'm talking zero cost go again options here, right? Not for our dual swings with the Blade Runners and all that stuff, right? I'm talking like Dorinthia Dawnblade here, right? So now enter this card, okay? So target warrior attack with attack greater than its base, Let's go again. That in of itself, I think would be completely reasonable to play this card. Okay, but on top of that, and again, this is an attack reaction, so they don't know what's coming. The next time an opposing hero is dealt damage, just turn, create an agility token. Now that is important because one of the matchups I had this weekend was Dromai. So you can't do that to pop dragon and then pop another dragon. You have to be a little smart about how you do it. And, you know, it doesn't, I mean, but that's only for the agility token, to be clear, right? It still gives go again. 
So you can use it to pop two dragons, you just don't get the agility token off it, right? To be clear, to clarify my statement, okay? So this, this card is, again, I think if it didn't have that second paragraph there, it'd be just fine, right? So what I was doing is I was running kind of a front pump-esque Dorinthia build where I, I was, because I wanted to take advantage of commanding presence. I wanted to kind of, you know, do that thing, you know, sharpen steels and all that, and, you know, just come in with nine. But shift the tide of battle, I was loving the play where I was putting in my arsenal, okay? And I could come in for nine, and or or six right in some cases you know usually if you come in with six traditionally it's like with a warrior's valor or something like that they know they have to block it and stop it but a lot of times if you come in with like a sharpen especially off a yellow pitch right you come in off like a sharpened steel dorinthia blade and you got one floating no cards in hand one in arsenal they're not really thinking that you're coming in for a threatening second swing. They're certainly probably not going to block nine. Now, in this case, obviously, you wouldn't be able to swing again, so you wouldn't use it in that case, fair enough. But it really throws off just the presence of this card in general really starts to throw things off. And again, as long as you can pump your blade, which I, again, I was going with a front pump build. And in, and in front pump builds, a lot of times you're just like, all right, I've got a counter on. I'm just going to come in and try to make my sword hit. And a lot of times they won't necessarily shut it down because you're coming in for four, right? There was a there was a time that I came in for, I forget what the blue pump was, but I came in, actually it might have been just a bare naked swing, right? Which is kind of like the bare naked ladies. Anyway, bad dad joke. But it came in with, like, yeah, I think it was actually, it was in a Dramai match actually, yeah, it was. Came in with a four and was able to just give it go again. I, that's phenomenal, Okay. So that's the Dorinthia side of things. Now let's talk about a very popular kind of like side build that's going on right now, which is the front pump hot streak. Okay. We've been seeing that in Kasai primarily where they run once in Terry one hot streak. And what you do is you load with like a, cause you have Outland Skirmish too, right? So you can do Outland Skirmish, sharpen steel, lots of zeros into a hot streak, hoping they block it and give you a go again. Well, if they don't block it, you don't get your go again, but then there's shift the tide of battle. So now not only do you get to go again, you're pumping an agility. So next time you get to go again, that's pretty, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. This card is, again, I'll put the prices up. You can do what you want with that and make conclusions you want with that. I think this card is severely, I mean, the prices show that this is severely underrated with how good it is. And I think that's a mistake. This card is really, 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 really good. And uh, just a fun fact, uh, Amy and I finally opened our case uh, two nights ago, and uh, she was, I was actually, I had just made the thumbnail for this video, and she pulled a foil, shoved the tide of battle, which was pretty awesome. Neither here nor there, just a fun fact for me. So anyway, I highly recommend that people be running this card. I've, I've seen some of those front pump Dorinthia decks out there. there. There's been a couple really cool deck techs, and um, they're not running this card. And if you're going to do like a front pump, I may not have said that correctly, but front pump hot streak is what I was talking about, right? I've seen a couple hot streak decks out there. If you're doing like a buff hot streak deck and you're not running this card, I think it's a mistake. Uh, this card was very, very, very impressive to me. So anyway, info from our warrior players, you go do with it what you will, make the decisions that you will. But again, I want to be clear. I think this card would have been just fine with only the top part and the fact that you can get an agility on hit to set you up for your next turn is freaking insane. So run this card, check it out, get your reps in. That's my piece for tonight. Nothing else, folks. Go Commando.